If you're a photographer and you find yourself shooting more and more film and you want to build a perfect, wonderful, manual focus film system, maybe the journey that I took will be useful to you as you try to build your perfect system. My name is Rob Skew and I've been shooting film for over 50 years and working as a professional photographer for over 45 years for clients like Major League Baseball, the NFL, and I've been published in Sports Illustrated, National Geographic. Maybe some of these techniques I've learned will help you as you learn about film photography. Let's dive right in and build the perfect camera system. So this is a system of manual focus lenses. I wish I had had these as a working photojournalist back in the day. I couldn't afford them. Photographers didn't have the kind of money that they have now. We couldn't, we couldn't afford this nice stuff. We were always using old gear that was taped together. When I started to build this system, the, the camera I went with was the Nikon F3 and the, the lens that was sort of the number one choice and the, you know, a lens that I definitely wanted to have was the 35-1.4. Now, it was a different time when these lenses were made. At this time, lenses were made to the highest quality that the brand could make. So if it, if it was Pentax, they made all their lenses as premium as they could. If Nikon was better, it was throughout the whole line. Brands didn't make a cheaper version, a price point version, like they do now. It all changed when Nikon came out with the E version of their lenses. So they used to make a 50 f2 and a 51.4. They were the same build quality. One was just faster. And the, the slower one was probably sharper, uh, lighter, cheaper but same build quality. Then Nikon came out with the E line of lenses, economy, and they downgraded the quality a little bit uh, to make a price point. And it wasn't a full system of E lenses, but there was a number of them out there. So that changed it all. Now you see brands have, you know, nifty 50s and they're inexpensive, uh, and they're, you know, lesser quality, and then they have like pro lenses and premium lenses and all these different lenses. But Back when it was manual focus, everyone was just building the best quality they could. Like it built the best quality they could. Maybe it was better than Canon Nikon Pentax. It was the best that they could build. But Nikon wasn't trying to be a price point. They were building the best that they could. And I think that's an important thing to consider. So I wanted the 35 one because I wanted that 1.4 lens. But they did make a 35 F2. It was probably lighter, cheaper, sharper but not as fast, and it, they had the same filter size. So that, and there probably was a 35 weight, which was just lighter, cheaper, again, same build quality throughout them. Now in my system, 35-1.4, that's the basis of my system. That's my go-to lens when I'm walking around. Now what happens though, and this could happen to you, when you buy the camera, uh, you can buy it with, on eBay and you're gonna buy a camera body, but wow, this, this camera body is the same camera body and it comes with a 50, it just has the 50 on it. So I ended up with a 51.4 for maybe 50 or $60 more than just buying a camera by itself. Uh, the camera, there was cameras available, body only, but wow, it was only 50 bucks more or 70 bucks to get it with a lens. I can always sell this off, maybe I can use it. it wasn't a lens that I wanted in my perfect system, but I have a 51.4 as well because it came with the used camera body that I got. And that's fine, and that might happen to you as well. When you go from the 35, where are you gonna go? So I went with the 85, this is the 85-1.4. I definitely wanted an 85-1.4. I always used an 85-1.4. I wanted the faster f-stop. It was definitely a lens that I'm happy to own and that I do use. However, I wouldn't mind having the 85 f2 as well. It'd be the only duplicate length that I'd really want because the 85 f2 is, let's just, C, sharper, lighter, cheaper, and uses the 52 filter thread that all the other lenses use, and I use filters a lot when I shoot black and white. So I'm happy to have the 85.1.4. I wouldn't mind also having an 85.f2, but you could also just get away with the 85.f2. Now, wider than 35, I went with the 24. This is the 24.f2. There is a 2.8, again, cheaper, lighter, sharper, but I went with the 24 F2. That's a great range between 35 and 24. So that was a, this, this is a great lens, great consideration. And longer than the 85, I went with the 135 28. So most people when I was shooting pro at newspapers used a 180 28. 
And I considered that, but you know, I know that it's a big physical lens like this, and I know I was, wouldn't be willing to carry it. So the 180 was kind of the standard go-to thing. Uh, I wouldn't be willing to carry one. Then they also had the sister lens to that was the 135 f2. Again, great big lens, super super fast aperture for the, for its focal length, uh, heavy, uh, expensive, bulky, more than I'm willing to carry. So I went with the 135 28. Remember, they weren't inferior back then. They were still pro build quality. The 135 28. Nowadays, you would kind of call it a consumer lens, but in the day, it was just a lighter version of the 135 F2. My friends had the 135 F2. I'm not willing to carry it. Uh, Nikon also kind of diverged from that. They had the 135 F2 that had a defocus mechanism, or like let's call it soft focus. It was great for portraits, uh, but I'm talking about the straight up 135 F2. So this is basically the system that I'm working with. The 24, mine's an F2, they make a 2.8. The 35, mine's a 1.4, they make a 2. The 85 and the 135. So where do you go from here? Well, you don't need to go anywhere. You could do a lot of work with these four lenses. You could shoot weddings, you could go do nature uh, landscape work, you could do street photography. You'd have plenty to work with here. You could travel the world. If you found that you just always needed something wider, the 24 is great. In the day, the, most people, 24 was as wide as people had. I, uh, in the manual focus days, I don't know anyone who had a 20. But now, there are, there's definitely people who shoot wider. Uh, you could get a 20, that'd be a good option if you needed wider, or I'd probably go with an 18. They made an 18, uh, had, it was bigger than the 20, it was more expensive, it still is more expensive, used the bigger filter. So there's a lot of drawbacks to the 18 compared to the 20, but it just gives you a little more distance between the 24 and the 20, a 24 and 18, just to let, you know, if you're gonna carry another lens, you might as well get as much coverage as you can. So that's an option, the 20 or the 18, that'd be something I might buy down the road. Now, you could also go longer. So 135 is great for portraits, it's great for uh, taking a picture of something across the street, it's great for the, to compress the, the image a little bit, uh, to isolate the subject, things like that. 135 is great. They do make a 200 f4. Now with an f4 lens on your manual focus, the split screen tends to go black. And if you use the split screen to manually focus, it doesn't really work with the f4 lenses, just so you know. So they do make a 200 f4. It's very similar to this, just a little bit longer. It'd be a good choice. I've used one in the past quite a bit in the early days of my photography. And it was certainly, uh, it's, you know, it's certainly pro build quality and all, all of those features. Again, the 180 was a little more popular because it was faster. I wouldn't get a 200. I think it's too close for what I'm trying to do. I would get a 300. So my first 300, a 345, a great big manual thing, uh, was heavy. It was hard to focus. You just about had to hook a pipe wrench on it just to focus it. It was ridiculous. Anyways, I had I owned that years and years ago. I wouldn't get that again. But they did come out with a 300, I think it was an F4, but it might have been 4.5. The ED version, so it had better glass than the one I had, and internal focus. So it was much shorter, much lighter, much sharper. So I would get that 300 F4 or 4.5, I can't remember exactly, ED version with internal focus. If I was going longer than the 135, I'd be happy to use that lens. I'd probably be using it on a tripod, maybe doing some kind of scenery with it where you really want to compress it. But not something you would want to carry every day because I don't really think you'd use that longer lens that often. So what would your perfect system be if you were building a manual focus film system? Why not put that in the comments below? This is what I came up with. 35, 24, 85, 135. If I was going to add, maybe I'd add an 18 or a 300. But this is the core perfect system for me. But put in the comments what yours would be. Hit subscribe, maybe a thumbs up.